Hey there, happy Monday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's the time that we can relax and craft together. And tonight we are starting the embroidery of the month for December. It is our let it snow little snowman and horse uh, ready for a little sleigh ride. So that is what we'll be starting tonight. Uh, all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and let's get going. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna pop you on over here. All right, hope everyone is having a nice evening. I'm gonna open up our kit here. So this is our embroidery of the month for December. Uh, let it snow. It's uh, called Sleigh Ride and it has um, a little horsey and the horse drawn sleigh basically with the little snowman in the sleigh. All right, there's all our stuff. So I'm gonna use the box as a, as my tray, as like my work tray. So I'm gonna stick my, uh, I'll put all my floss in there and we have a little ribbon to, actually I'm gonna put those scissors by me on this side. Um, there's a little ribbon to decorate the hoop afterwards or to hang the hoop. And uh, let's grab our hoop. Got my little making your embroidery instruction booklet and the uh, how to instructions here. So this is what shows what stitches we're doing and uh, uh, what colors go where. Uh, so I'm gonna have this like out uh, in front of me uh, as I as I work. So we can put that guy there and grab my needle. Uh, I am gonna, I have my little needle minder out here. So I'm gonna use that tonight. I think that's fun to use. And let's unfold it. Okay, so there's our design. Uh, it is pre-printed on the fabric there. I'm gonna put it in my hoop. Let's get the inner hoop on the bottom. I'm not, it has a, like a little fold in it, but I'm not gonna worry about that uh, till at the end. I think once we have it in the hoop, it'll all kind of get stretched out too. Oops, I gotta open that a little bit more. Pop that on, pop the outer hoop on the inner hoop, and then I'm just gonna kind of stretch in the hoop so there's no like little kinks or uh, any weird bubbles in the, in the fabric or anything like that. And then we can tighten it up little by little. And we're ready to start stitching this feller. I hope everyone had a nice weekend. I just got back from uh, visiting my parents and, and Chad Kitty. And we just got back from a, like a five hour drive. So I uh, had time to do my nails and we're ready to go here. So, okay, let's see, where do we want to start? I kind of want to start with the horse because he looks like fun. Um, so why don't we start with the outlines of the horse here? Uh, so that's going to be done in the back stitch. So back stitch are the thin lines, which are most of the lines on here. The chain stitch will be these fat uh, lines for like his um, reins and um, everything. And then we got some French knots in here too. So, all right, let's start with the, with the horsey. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my 24 inches or so of thread and we'll split, ooh, okay, so let's use three strands of floss. So what that means is we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna take a, a cut of our embroidery thread and I do about 24 inches. We're going to, split it into the three strands. So it, this is six strand embroidery floss. Uh, embroidery floss typically comes with six strands together. Uh, what we're gonna do is separate them into three strands. So our, our thread will just be thinner that we stitch with. Um, and we'll get to use twice, it'll go twice as long, twice as far because we're splitting it in half. So I'm just pulling them one at a time and then we'll put it back together. All 
right. Oh, I didn't put my needle minder on here. I'll do that yet. Getting ahead of myself here. All right, the other thing I'm going to do, uh, you don't need to do this, but I have it now, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to uh, use my floss scent thread conditioner and uh, get the floss gliding through there. This will just kind of strengthen the thread. It'll just keep it from wear and tear, basically. And it smells nice, and that's why I like it. Okay, and then let's get our little needle minder on. You can live up here for tonight. Okay, I have my old needle on and then the new one from the from the kit here. All right, let's thread. Thread our needle here and uh, I think we'll start with an away knot and uh, what this does is reserve a piece of thread for later. Um, so I can weave it into the back of uh, back of stitches later. And that helps us um, have a clean back and no knot on the back. All right, I think I'm going to start at his butt and go around and then kind of end up at his at his face. I don't know why I want to do it that way, but I think that'd be fun. All right, so I'm going to actually stick the um stick my needle through the through the fabric from the front to the back about four inches away from where I actually want to start. So we got a little funny knot there. Uh, that'll be fine. Okay, and then I'm going to come up where I want to start. So the beginning of the line is here. And we're going to go around his butt and we're going to go like one stitch away from our start point for the back stitch. All right, and here's my thread that I'm going to reserve to tuck in for later. And now we're going to just hang out and do a back stitch. So I, I started a stitch length away from the beginning of the line. Now I'm going to go, uh, my first stitch is going to go backwards towards that beginning. And that's our first stitch for the back stitch. And I'm going to come up a stitch length away from where that last stitch started. So I have a little gap here. And then I'm going to go backwards along the line again into that same hole that we started the last stitch out of. So that's the back stitch. And we're going to just keep doing that. We're going to go a little forward along the line coming up and then backwards along the line, back into the same hole to go down. And uh, we're just gonna go around and around here. I like this little horsey, I think he's fun. Amy says, happy Monday, yes. Happy Monday, this, I feel like it went quick today. Well, half of my Monday was um, in the car. But it was fun to hang out with family again this, this weekend. And Chad Kitty came to the door every day, so I got to give him all the pets. He's got his winter coat on still, so he's big and floofy. Hey, I see Adrian, Jackie, and Debbie, and Wanda. Thanks, you guys. And Amy, thanks, thanks for being here tonight. We're just going to chill and stitch on the embroidery of the month for a little. So I will be here all week this week. I know it's been pretty sporadic lately with the holidays and it'll probably continue to be sporadic but this week um this week i am planning on being here all week so i think we should be able to finish this this one's got a lot going on with it a lot of surface area here so uh, i'm hoping we finish it this week we'll we'll see
And I think I'll be on a couple days next week, but I have to figure that out yet. All right, so I'm coming up to this little hoof, and I think that's just, yeah, it's just brown um, along the hoof there. So I'm going to make, there's that little, you know, cross, that stitch going across his leg there to the, determine the hoof. I'm just going to stitch that. We'll hop back up. I think we'll just do this one big stitch. I could split this into two stitches, but we'll just do one, one stitch to finish that leg off. Hi, Arlene. So we had a pile of flash sales last week. So thanks everyone who partic participated in that. Um, they will go out tomorrow in the mail. Uh, this is technically our last ship day, um, so <laughs> it'd be great to, if you were wanting any orders or whatever yet, any, any kits, still, um, today would be the day to get them. Um, we're also having our, uh, live special where if you're watching live, um, and you order $20 or more, I'll throw in a free mystery gift. So yeah, so we'll be, uh, um, orders today will be shipped tomorrow, and uh, we will still be shipping after, but you know, after tomorrow, it's, it still might get there before Christmas, but you know, you're testing your luck a little bit, basically, uh, with, um, with the post office, so, so that's why, I think this is probably maybe the earliest we've had our, you know, get your stuff ordered by today thing, but you know, so if you do place an order beyond today, uh, we'll still ship it quickly. It's just, you know, can't guarantee the post office. Can't really guarantee the post office now either, but sooner the better, that's, that's all we're saying. Oh, Jackie says received one of my orders today. Yay, the packaging is so fun and very creative. Oh, I appreciate that. Now I wait for my next package of needle miners. Oh, nice. I've not used them before, so I'm excited to try them. Uh, made my day and put a smile on my face. Oh, Jackie, that is so sweet. Thank you so much. But yeah, the needle miners, uh, I hadn't used them for a while, but now that I'm using them, it's just so nice. I just love being able to toss my, my needle at it, like versus, because usually I just kind of like set it near me and uh, um, then, then I lose it for sure. Oh, Linda, uh, Linda Patrick, I sell hand embroidery kits and embroidery supplies and various like sewing notions, basically. Um, so this is an example of one of our kits. Um, has some cute, cute packaging with it. And uh, it comes with everything you need to start stitching to start with embroidery. And we got like I don't know, over 80 designs, over 80 like kits at this point. Um, so lots of different motifs. Uh, it's at penguinandfish.com. Oh, MJ, thank you. This is so adorable. So yeah, so this is our embroidery of the month. Uh, it's like, if you're a subscriber, it comes right away. And, and uh, if you order it, during the month, you get a little freebie. Our freebie this month are three little uh, Let It Snow uh, gift tags. So you get like a little set of those if you order it this month. Uh, it will be available. You don't need to be subscribed to, to get it. It's available to everyone uh, this month. And it'll be after, it'll be available after this month too, just uh, not with the freebies anymore. But yeah, so this is our embroidery of the month, and then we just have a bunch of other designs as well. So that's what we sell. And then we have cute little scissors and floss and needle minders and zippers and all sorts of little sewing notions too. Ooh, Amy says, love the color uh, nail polish. Yeah, I'm kind of going through my old nail polishes again because this isn't the dip polish. This is just like the lacquer still. And I got to start putting some of that. I got some of that drip stuff that you put in so it makes it last longer because I don't know, some of it 
Some of it seems like it's getting kind of old and old again, but this this was like one of the good ones yet. <laughs> Went on easy without causing a big mess. So it didn't take that long, which was great. Since I, I got home here, did my nails quick, and now I'm, now I'm on with you guys. <laughs> that was a quick, quick turnaround from driving. Oh yeah, no, no problem, Linda. And then also on our website, we have like ideas of what you can make with your embroideries and um, tips on uh, like how to do different stitches and uh, just sort of like resources like that as well. And I'm here every evening at 8.30 p.m. Central Time and more than happy to answer any, uh, any questions you might be having with, with embroidery or whatever. Ooh, my parents had up the Christmas tree. That was very, very nice and cute and fun. All right, let's get his front legs. I'm going to be out of floss soon here, so we'll um, weave in this end. And I have that other half of the thread. So again, we, we started off with, um, I'm using six strand embroidery floss, which is your typical embroidery floss. Uh, but it comes with six strands and they separate really easily so you can decide if you want to stitch with a different number of strands and that'll create like a different thickness of your line. Um, this design I'm stitching with three strands. So I split those six strands into three and uh, we're on our first, first um, go at that. And then the, the other half of this is sitting next to me here and I'm going to need that real soon here. Because I'm getting pretty low on this, but it, we made it pretty far. Far enough that I think uh, one more um, bit will get us get us um, the rest of his head. I think maybe. Hope so. Is there any more brown in this? Oh yeah. So uh, his little uh, arms are brown too. I don't know if we'll do that now or sometimes I like to get all the same color all at once. But sometimes I just like to work an area and work my way over, and we'll pick up that other color later. And, and I don't know. Maybe I'll. I don't know, how should I do it? Should I should I just do all of this color till it's completely done? Or um, should I just kind of work on this horse and then work on this guy after, even if there's colors that are used in both spots? Kind of, kind of undecided. Oh yeah, and Amy says, and nearly all of my kits have been stitched live. <laughs> so those are available on uh, on like YouTube for, for free to, to watch with with each, each kit as well. What will this piece be made into? So first of all, we are doing a hand embroidery project. So this is our, this is what it'll be like when it's done. It's, uh, this is our embroidery of the month. It's sleigh ride. It's got a cute little let it snow text on there with um, the horse pulling. A little snowman in his sleigh. Uh, I think this one I might just frame in the hoop, kind of like what it looks like on the cover here. Uh, just frame it in the hoop and hang it up as decor. But uh, you can really do anything you want with these. So it's pretty open-ended uh, as far as the kit goes. So you could sew this onto a bag. That's something I like doing a lot is making like little zipper pouches out of the embroideries. Um, but this would look great. Like you could sew this into a quilt or like sew it into like a Christmas stocking or something would be kind of fun. Um, I've made these into patches before. 
pillows, pillowcases. Actually, maybe that'd be a fun idea. I could turn this into a like a little like throw pillow and then it'd be like a fun little holiday decor to bring out. Oh, Amy says, I vote horse, then snowman. So doing all the horse all at once. Oh, Lynn says that too. Finish the horse, otherwise you'll waste floss with a way nuts. That's true. Oh, uh, Lynn says, I like doing these on tea towels. Uh, do I ever sell larger tea towels? Ooh, so like what size are you wanting for larger tea towels? I think ours, what are ours right now? I think they're like, I don't know, 20 by 30 or something. I can't quite remember. It says in the shop there. But yeah, sure. I'd uh, I'd uh, look into getting larger tea towels. All right, we're gonna stick to the horse. I think, I think it has been voted on. Um, so we'll just keep working on the horse and then switch to, you know, other parts later. So I'm not gonna do, for example, all of the brown. Like his his branches are arms are brown. Um, I'm gonna just stick to the horse and then then move on after that. <laughs> All right, we got a three-legged horse now. I'm I'm out of thread, so I'm gonna flip to the back and I'm gonna weave in my remaining floss. I use the word floss and thread interchangeably. I don't. I'm not sure there's any real difference. <laughs> like I don't know if those are truly separate vocabulary words or if they're interchangeable. I use them interchangeably. All right, so I go back and forth three times and then I can snip my thread close to the stitches. And, uh, and there we are. So there are no knots on the back. We just wove in the stitches back and forth. And now here you can see, this is my piece of thread that I reserved earlier. Uh, that's called the away knot. Um, and then that's so I could, um, I'm just clipping away that little knot. I'm, this was me basically making a placeholder of thread um, that I can weave in now because I started out without any stitches to weave, weave it into. There weren't any stitches on the back yet. Uh, so I needed to like hold it for time being. And now I can um, stitch in the backs of these stitches. So one, I'm gonna do three times again. Two, trying to go different directions each time or different, a different path each time. We're kind of just making like a long knot almost. Three. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I forgot the one needle. I forgot I have two needles on my needle minder and I accidentally grabbed, grabbed the other one. Let's bring these both back to the front. All right, and there we go. First thread is done. So I'm gonna just grab the um, other half of our floss. So again, we started off with six strands in here and I pulled out three because I'm only stitching with three. That'll give me a little thinner line. Okay, Lynn says I like tea towels at least 27 by 30. I think those are pretty close to that. I use them in dry dishes. Oh, and lay over your lefsa while cooling. Ooh, are you making a lot of lefsa now? That's fun. I know what that is, but I've never seen it made in, in real life. Oh, Amy, I think I saw your, uh, right before coming on here, I think I saw your uh, pillowcase. Amy says, I gifted my pillowcase and posted it to the crafters group. Uh, yeah, I saw it over um, in the penguin and fish crafters group over on the facey pages. It turned out so pretty. That's so much stitching. All those uh, yellow roses. Okay, so I'm all threaded up and ready to go. So now I don't have to do the uh, away knot anymore because I do have stitches on here now. So now I can just get started by weaving in the end. Uh, just like how we ended it. Now I'm gonna weave in the end to start and we can just continue. I don't have to do that away knot. That was only because I didn't have any stitches to weave into yet. All right, there we are. And now I can start up where I left off and I'm hoping 
that this is enough gloss for me to finish the brown on the horse. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might do his hair, his mane next. His nice flowing fawn colored mane. We did we did a light colored mane on him, but you could do a dark a dark too. I just thought the the like fawn colored mane was kind of kind of cute. But like a black mane or like a dark brown mane would be really pretty too. Actually, you could just you could really decide what color you wanted this horse. Like this would be so neat as like a black horse. Um, that'd be really pretty too. I think I just did like this kind of light brown horse, so it would kind of have not be too contrasty. So we could have just kind of like a nice range of just so the colors were kind of more meshed together versus high contrast. Although, ooh, okay, what about a black horse with like a red sled? That would be so fun. So I kind of want to do one like that now too. So our uh, embroidery of the month comes as um, a fabric only. Uh, kit as well as a PDF. So um, if you didn't want the whole kit, then we do have it like that too. Oh, I have not answered that a million times. Oakley, feel free to ask whatever you guys want. Uh, what is the wax stuff? So uh, this is, it's a, it's a thread conditioner. This is um, a new thread conditioner. We actually only have it right now in our uh, Relax and Craft embroidery box. It was actually made by my brother's candle company. We did a little collaboration with him. So uh, it's called Floss Scent because it is scented and super yummy smelling. Uh, it's their Alpen Glow scent, which is um, like a warm orangey citrus. It's so yummy. Uh, but anyway, it's a thread conditioner. And what that means, uh, it's basically a blend of uh, like coconut oil and wax and a scent like beeswax. So like organic uh, like cosmetic grade beeswax. And uh, what it does is you just run your, your floss over the top of it. Like I'm li very lightly um, holding it there with my thumb and you just go over your whole piece. And what you're doing is basically protecting your thread from wear. Uh, Cause you know, we're pulling it through fabric <laughs> and every time it goes through the fabric, it's, you know, there's all that friction, it's wearing away, especially if you're using a longer piece of thread. Um, you know, you'll notice when you start sometimes, like your thread might feel a little bit thinner at the end because it's just worn away a little bit. Um, so it protects the thread a little bit. It, it helps with um, decreased knotting and uh, it just basically keeps your thread strong through uh, the entirety of stitching. But I like it because it smells yummy. So I feel like you're you're almost making a scented embroidery <laughs> as you stitch. It's kind of like lighting a candle uh, next to you while you stitch. It. You're just getting like a more relaxing vibe, <laughs> basically. But it does actually protect the thread um, from wear um, as you stitch it. We call it floss scent because to me it's more about just stitching with a yummy scent as you, as you go and just being like having it be like relaxing, relax and craft. That's what we're doing with it. But yeah, it is a thread conditioner. It's sometimes like if you're looking online, sometimes people call it a thread gloss. I don't know where that name came from. So I think that's a little misleading. Uh, it's actually more like a thread conditioner. You're protecting Protecting the, the thread or floss conditioner, one or the other. But yeah, I think we will eventually have a version of it in the shop, but at our penguinandfish.com um, online shop. But right now we only have it as that uh, 
collaboration relax and craft box that I did with uh, my brother and his girlfriend's company, Sea to Snow Candle Co. And uh, that box comes with a cute little um, one of our embroidery kits. Uh, it's Elp and Glow is the volume, like volume one, Elp and Glow. So we have our Elp and Glow embroidery kit. Then we have uh, the Elp and Glow candle, which just smells so freaking amazing. And then the floss scent, which matches that smell. And uh, then a cute little purple scissors comes in that as well. So that's our like our gift box for this year. And it's, uh, like I said, a collab with with my uh, brother and his girlfriend. <laughs> they started uh, uh, their candle company this year and they've been doing really, really well. They just got done doing Renegade Craft in um, Seattle this past weekend. But yeah, so maybe later next year we might have the floss scent uh, thread conditioner available in the, sh in the shop. I don't know if we'll have it in the Elp and Glow flavor, but we'll, um, or scent. But some version of it we'll have. Oh dang, uh, Lynn says I made one batch of Lefsa at home and helped Sons of Norway make about 20 batches. Oh my goodness. That had to take forever. So fun though. Oh, Oakley says, I love that you both have your own companies and collab with each other. That's, this is the first time we've done that. So they, they're, they're, um, they just started. Gosh, I was going to say they just started this year, but like, was that this year? Maybe they started last year. Um, but they really are getting going. Like they did tons of shows this year. And uh, I think they just launched their website. I think, I think they did. Or they're going to launch their website super duper soon. Um, but yeah, they're just, uh, they're just wonderful people. And I'm so happy that I can do a collab with them. And it just fits because it, it's kind of a weird combo, right? Like candles and, and embroidery. But if you really think about it, it totally, like they just work together so well. Because if you're embroidering, usually you just want to chill and relax and, uh, you know, it's me time. It's like time to just, you know, do something for yourself and relax and uh, uh, get a candle, get a glass of wine or whatever, and uh, um, put on some music and just embroider, put on a show. So as far as the relax and craft vibe, I think they, they go together well. Ooh, okay, I'm coming up to his nose and mouth. Okay, that's why I was just wanted to see if, if any of that was the brown. So his little nostril guy there is the brown, so I can't forget him. He looks like he has a little smiley face in his mouth. Um, so let's see. I think we'll go around, and then I'll jump over and do his nose, and then kind of jump back to the rest of his head. I don't know if I'll have enough thread here. I might have get get more because we still have his little ears to do. I think I'll do, like I said, I think I'll do the, his hair, like his, his mane and tail next. Um, and then before I get too far on him, I want to get his face in. So his, uh, like his smile, his nostrils, and his eyes. I don't know if we'll get to that tonight, uh, but tomorrow for sure, because I can't let him go faceless for, for too long. And then after that, we just have to put like his pack on. Um, that'll be kind of fun. He'll be a naked horse, and then we'll get all his stuff on. Then he'll be ready to pull the sleigh. All right, so this is, I want a little curve to his nose here, his nostril, or his, I guess, yeah, top of his nose. So I'm going to just make a couple teeny tiny stitches just to get that curve back in. There we go. And I think I'm going to just jump over to his other nostril and get that done. 
And then I'll just jump back to where I was at. I just need to go in three stitches here. Oop, that was kind of overshot a little bit there, but I think we'll be fine. Okay. There we are. And back to spinning his head, and I think. Yeah, so we just go up to there, and then I'm just gonna jump across his hair. Usually I try not to jump across big spaces like that, like blank spaces, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So um, I, I try not to do that so I can't, so I don't see the line uh, show up behind, like if I have it backlit. Uh, but this is just a, such a small space, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna hop up, do his little ear there, and then we got just this little ear, and, and yeah, then he's done with the brown. How much thread do I have? Oh, I should have plenty to do all that. Good. Good, good, good. Like when we have just enough thread. All right. We'll do a forward stitch for this last one just so I can be closer to the um closer to jumping up for this ear um, whew, there good point all right now let's get his other ear and all the brown is done on him i still kind of want to do an all black horse with a with a red sleigh Ooh, what about a, a black horse did i say an all red horse I don't know if I said red. I meant an all black horse if I said all red horse, but an all black, an all black horse with um, a red sleigh. Uh, but then I was just thinking like a uh, a black horse with silver hair would be really cute too, or gray hair. That'd be kind of fun to stitch. All right, I got that one little last stitch of his ear. Pop over and do that quick. And then I think we'll we'll still have time to um, start his mane, I think, his little fawn colored mane. Uh, what do I plan on doing? Uh, Sally's asking, uh, what do I plan on doing this when I, doing with this when I'm done? Uh, right now, I think I might just frame him in the hoop kind of like how uh it is here and use it as just decoration but we were just talking about that earlier i think it's either that or i think i have one more like blank like pillow form left i might um sew it like sew like a border around it and make it into a pillow then it can be like a decorative throw pillow for for um winter which would be kind of fun uh, one thing I do do often with with the um, with my embroideries is turn them into zipper pouches. I think I have. Yeah, I got a few of those around. They hold like different crafts. So like here's here's one uh, zipper pouch. This this holds my darning materials, and you usually darn uh, in fall because you're fixing your sweater. So that's why I use this embroidery for that. But uh, so that's that's an option um that i do often um or a little tote bag but i think i think a little pillow might be kind of fun for this guy oh tea towels are always nice too uh so if you this you know i'm not stitching on a tea towel uh but if any of you guys i know i know tea towels are popular you can actually sew this like cut this out as like a cute little square or just like all the way around and you can applique it to a tea towel 
as well, and it'll it'll work for that. So if you started uh, using the kit and you're like, oh dang, now I want to make it a tea towel, but I'm already stitching it on this other fabric, uh, you can still like applique it with a little zigzag stitch or something, and it'll be really cute. All right, there we go. We have a nearly naked horse there. Let's get uh, let's give him some hair. I'm using the fawn color from the kit for for his hair, but again, I think like there's black and gray in here. Oops, for for different parts of the kit, but like imagine him like a black horse with like silver, like this gray hair. I think that would be a really cute uh, way of stitching this too. But we're sticking to uh, the design for now, which is brown horse with the fawn colored hair. All right, so I'm cutting my 24 inches again, and. Uh, we're stitching. Oh, this is more like 18 inches. I cut this a little shorter, which is fine. And I'm going to bop the top of the floss there to kind of separate it. And I'm using my three strands again. So we're pulling one strand at a time. I just think, I mean, I know people separate their floss in different ways, but I just think this is kind of the fastest way now. I, I didn't do it this way forever. And then people kept recommending it to for me and then I started just doing it and I, I love that way of separating floss now. It really makes less of a mess, less less um knots, you know, when you're trying to trying to separate the thread and it's just super duper quick. Alright, and let's use our red conditioner too. Ooh. Oh any reason you don't use knots? Oh Elgal, um, any reason I don't use knots, I'm new to embroidery and I see people doing loops and said, oh, okay, so I have answers to both of that. So uh, I don't use knots because I find them annoying mostly and I'll tell you, tell you why. So it's, it's perfectly fine to use knots, um, but I personally, now that I'm not using them, I'm, I'm just, really happy with it because I hate with knots like okay you tie a knot and then you have like that little end so like I'm stitching and I'll always kind of pull those little threads from the from the end through to the front which just is annoying and then I have to pick them out uh and bring them back to the back to the back and uh, uh so that and then I'll be stitching for a while and then I'll notice like I'll have caught the knot on the back like my thread will be caught on the knot so I'll have like this whole big thing of thread that I'm like, oh God, I wasted all that thread because it got stuck on a knot. So for, for those reasons, those, those two annoying to me reasons was enough for me to um, stop using knots, but it also made my backs like super duper clean. Like all of a sudden when I stopped using knots, like I, I just got really, really nice clean backs. Uh, so that was kind of, a bonus. <laughs> um, so that's that's why I don't like using knots. Uh, another practical reason for that is if you frame a piece, um, those knot areas might be a little bit bumpy, so those parts won't be totally flat. I haven't actually tried that yet, but I have heard people um, report on, on that as well. But for me, it's just those little annoyances um, and why don't you use knots. So the loop, the loops that you're talking about, um, I can show you, I'll do a little demo on that. So I am not doing the loops because I'm actually using three strands of floss. Um, and uh, to do the loop method, you want to do more, you need like an even, an even number and I'll show you why. So if I wanted to stitch with like two strands of thread uh, instead of three, which is very common, I would like imagine that this is longer, this is just a scrap, scrap thread, but I would actually take I would actually make my piece, I would cut my piece from my skein like twice as long as normal and I would pull just one piece out of it. So imagine this is super long. Uh, you'd fold, you'd fold your um, thread in half, you'd thread the side that has uh, the two ends and then your other side, and imagine, again, this would be really long. Your other end would have the um, fold, right? And so then if I wanted to start stitching, let's say I'm gonna start this let it snow up here. I'm gonna come up 
I, well, I gotta see if my thread's long enough to do this, but then we'll go back down before pulling it all the way through. And uh, um, you'll see that I have this loop now where the fold was. And I can go right through that loop. And there we go, I've locked the loop, uh, my thread in place with the loop. And I can just keep stitching. And that's all there freaking is to it. I have no knots, no weaving in of the beginning end. It is as clean as you can get. And that's, that's the loop method of, of starting. But it only works if you're using an even amount of thread because you gotta, you gotta fold it and have to get that, that loop. Uh, and since I'm using three, um, I've just been weaving in the ends instead. But look how clean that is. That is as clean as you can get it on the back. But so yeah, that's, that's the loop method. I'm gonna just pick that out. So that, I think that's probably what you're talking about when you said people, people are losing, using loops. And I love doing that because uh, that is so slick to just be able to use, um, use the loop like that. But yeah, it doesn't work with, with three strands. Uh, do I ever use a hoop holder? Oh, um, like a hoop stand. Um, I don't really. I mean, I, I, if I was just, most of my stitching I do live here. And uh, I, I cater to beginners, I would say, and you know, more experienced people as well. But most of my designs are, are simple and uh, um, beginners can do them uh, and all that. And uh, I find that, you know, beginners aren't gonna have all the gear, right? Like, um, like a hoop stands and, and all that. So I, I like doing my lives without, even though I know it's shaky and I'm moving around all over. It would probably look a whole lot nicer if I used a, a hoop stand. Um, but now nah, I usually just do, do it like this. If I'm doing like a lot of embroidery on, on my own, and if I remember, then, uh, then I might use a hoop stand. I don't really have a good one. I've actually been using uh, different clamps and stuff. You, you can actually like clamp, clamp it to your table uh, to do it. But there is, there is benefits to using a, a hoop stand. So if, if people don't know, a hoop stand is like your hoop is actually connected to something else and then you connect it to your table or you sit on it, but your hands are free basically, right? That's the beauty of it. So I could have a hand underneath and a hand on top and uh, just have them both going at once and Stitching becomes faster. It's it's easier on the hands. Um, you can prop it up just how you want it. It really is nice. So if you are doing a lot of embroidery or you've you're like oh, I hate holding the hoop like this, investing in a stand is a great idea. It it really is handy. But there are a lot of like crappy ones out there, and the good ones are super duper expensive. So it is it is basically a luxury that you know makes the whole experience nicer. Uh, but, but yeah, um, you don't always need one. Uh, Sally says, I was just asking because my hands cramp if I hold the hoop too long. Oh, okay. So that would be a great reason to, to do the hoop stand for sure, because your hands are, are free. It's going to be much nicer on your back, much nicer on your hands, uh, for sure. So yeah, give it a, give it a try for sure. I think there's one. I'm trying to think of, there's a company that makes one that, that everyone seems to like. They most always would, which I don't know. I don't know if I'm wild about that. Uh, but um, gosh, I can't remember the brand that everyone likes, but they, they run like $70 or so, but totally worth it, especially if your hand cramps um, from holding the hoop. Uh, absolutely worth it. Robin. Oh, you always have a death grip on the on the hoop like it's a wet fish. So uh, you might notice like sometimes, you know, I'm stitching here live, so I have this table in front of me. You'll notice a lot of times uh, I'll just let it balance on on the table here. Uh, but I hear you <laughs> like that that grip. If you're stitching a long time, that is that is a lot to deal with for sure. So yeah, give a give um give the hoop stand a try. Totally worth it. They are, they are really nice. And it, it, it go, your um, work goes uh, 
so much faster too because you know you have both hands available um it is fun But yeah, I'm just, I was just thinking to myself, like, yeah, I'd probably, if I was just stitching on my own and, you know, wasn't worried about, like, people feeling like they, they need to get the extra gadgets or whatever, then I'd probably totally stitch with um, a stand a lot, actually, because, yeah, it is physically um, more comfortable for sure. Oh, that's funny. Amy says, um, I could put the skiing penguins on one side and this on the other for like a pillow. That would be really cute. So we have a, last year we did a skiing penguins. So it's like two little penguins uh, skiing down a hill and they got their little like ski swoops going. Um, their little trail behind them. But yeah, that's kind of the same style as, as these guys too. That would be cute. Having one on one side of the pillow and this on the other. Or like a little mini quilt or something. Like, like I wonder if, you know, I could do like four different. I'm jumping down to the. I did his bangs, jumping down to get um his, his other hair here. But yeah, like a little grouping of holiday winter designs would be kind of cute. I got this line going all the way back up here. I'm just trying to think of my path to take next. I wonder if I jump up, jump all the way up to that beginning again, and then stitch down versus stitching up. So I think I have enough floss to last a little, little longer here. I might do that. Yeah, I kind of like the pillow idea. I've I had these pillows. I think I've talked about this, but I got these pillows from IKEA like years and years and years ago, and I sewed like four pillows together because I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna make a um like a bench pillow basically. Like we got this like bookcase, and I was gonna make a a pillow bench for it, but it was so uncomfortable and didn't work well. Um, so I took the, I took it apart. So I've, I've just had these four pillow forms or just like pillows hanging around in my craft room forever. And I just, this year I'm like, I'm going to use these up. So I think I have one more. Um, I've used, I've made a bunch of other stuff out of them. Um, one's unfinished. The, my cat latch hook that I did that I finished a while back uh that i'm gonna turn into a pillow that's at my parents house just waiting to be made and then i think i did two other oh we did I, okay i'm gonna jump up here to do this other hair we made that um we did that remember the uh the bunny that we did in the circle like we were trying to sew sew a circle basically a circle within a circle <laughs> that doesn't make any sense saying it but like I don't know if anyone remembers when we worked on that pillow. I think that was earlier this year or maybe last year. So that's one of the pillows. In the oh wait, no, I didn't turn that one into a pillow form. That was a pillowcase that I put on a different pillow. What did I do with those other pillows? Uh, one we uh, um did that tweet wreath um sewing pattern, the quilt. And uh we kind of did like the little applique bits and turned it into a pillow. Yeah, I, I don't really have an embroidered one. Okay, I'll have to, yeah, this and and the, the um, penguin design, that would be fun together, I like that. Ooh, Amy says, or placemats or a table runner. Ooh, this would be a fun like holiday table runner, like part of that. I think I would personally get more use out of a Hello. I'll have to think about, about both of those. I 
I'm kind of making little stitches today. I feel like my stitches are smaller than usual. But we do have a lot of curves and stuff. I tend to make my stitches a little bit smaller around curves because that gives the effect of a curve because each stitch is basically a, a tiny straight line. So you need, you need a lot of those little straight lines to get the effect of a curve. So I think that's why I'm stitching a little bit smaller. Sometimes on a like straight path, so I'll make my stitches a little bit better or bigger, I mean. Ooh, Lynn says I like the placemat idea. Yeah, like a placemat with a little embroidered design in the corner or something. It'd be kind of fun. All right, I'm gonna try, let's see if I can get all the way back up there. Oh, I should have plenty to get, get up there, but then I think I'll need a new piece of floss. And so I think, um, you know, I'm here for an hour in the evenings, so I think I'll go till this thread is done and we will call it an evening. Ooh, that's a good idea. Fancy cloth napkins. It'd be fun to do like a little edging on it or like a little like crocheted edging. <laughs> Make fancy napkins. That would be really kind of fun. Full set. Ooh, oh God, this would be so much work. I would never do this, but like, I like the idea of it. Just like a whole, I mean, it's not really that much work, <laughs> but it would be fun. Um, do a set of like a set of four napkins or something all with like cute edges or whatever but you could do you could do all different horses then like i could do this horse and then the black horse with silver hair and you know that'd be fun a, a dark brown horse with with brown hair and they could just all be different but the same design i think that'd be really really cute okay, i kind of love that idea but dang that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> All right, uh, I have a little thread left, so I think uh, I'm gonna jump up here. Oh, is this part up here? Oh no, that's, that's, I was wondering if that part was the hair color, but it's not, that's part of the um, altar. Uh, so don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna jump to here, get as many more stitches as I can out of this piece of thread. And then tomorrow, We'll finish up wherever I left off here and then jump down and do his tail. Uh, yeah, so we'll finish his tail tomorrow, get his face done. I think we'll actually get him completely done tomorrow. That'd be a good goal. So uh, tomorrow, that means we'll be doing some French knots and we'll also be doing chain stitch. Uh, oops, primarily just the, those stitches, except we will do all the back stitch on the, on the tail first. So we're going to be doing all the stitches in this design tomorrow. So French knots and chain stitches. Oops, I almost pulled this out. I think I get maybe two, three more stitches. Then, then I'm out of floss, so I'll weave it in again. Ooh, thanks for the roses. Uh, with tomorrow's weather, it would be a good day to stay in embroider all day long. That's for sure. I think. Oh God, I've got to check it again, but. It's been like shifting every day. So I'm in, I'm in, I'm in like the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. So it's been shifting and changing <laughs> so quickly each day. But yeah, I think now they're saying that tomorrow is actually tonight is when it's all getting crappy. Ugh, I'm gonna have to watch the, the weather. Usually Jenna comes in on Tuesdays. So we'll have to see what the weather's like. Anyway, anyway regardless, I'm gonna, We'll get, we'll get the orders to the mail. Luckily it's pretty close to us, which is great. Okay, let's trim this. Boop. All right, see the back is looking real nice yet. Uh, got all this hair in there, just about. So, okay, again, tomorrow we will finish up his hair there and get his tail going. And then we will make him not naked anymore. We'll get his, um, his um, halter on and the reins going and all that. So we'll finish uh, the horsey completely tomorrow and then we'll move on to the little Mr. Snowman there. So, all right, you guys. I think we got a great start on this tonight. It's nice to be back. Uh, I will be here all week this week uh, at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. I'm here for about an hour. Uh, so we'll um, go back 
we will um will be here for till like 9 30 and uh yeah we'll get going on this uh oh robin um send us an email and uh we'll take a look at it I, it should uh we can probably do it for the subscription pricing again but like send us an email and um we'll we'll check it out tomorrow and make sure we get it squared away uh so awesome everyone i will uh see you all here tomorrow let's flip around here all right hello and uh yeah so i'll be back here again at 8 30 p.m central time tomorrow and yeah see you then everyone have a lovely evening good night